Husky fans, we are very excited to bring to you live from Husky Stadium. It's been a while. We've been preparing for a while, but guess what? Football here at DeKalb, Illinois, Maction, it is here. We got a great show for you today. Huskies from home pregame show. We have interviews with cornerback and uh, special teams coach Dan Jackson. We have an interview with cornerback, current cornerback Dylan Thomas, an interview with former wide receiver from the 2018 MAC championship team, DJ Brown. We'll get into that in a second. But first, hey, there's great ways for you guys to get engaged from home. There's the Husky Den. That's using the hashtag Husky Den on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Share your setup. Let's see that tailgate. Let's see your TV, your Husky Den, all that Husky gear. We know you're watching from home, so let's see it. Also, there's a view from your seat. Reply to one of our posts on Facebook and Twitter to see your typical seat location here at Husky Stadium. We'll show it to you. But let's set the stage here. And going back to the last time the Buffalo Bulls faced these NIU Huskies, it was the 2018 MAC Championship game. The Huskies came back from 19 points down to take the Buffalo Bulls down and take home another MAC Championship here to Northern Illinois University. But hey, the Buffalo and NIU matchup, it's got a historic lineage. NIU is 12 and 1 in that matchup. Of course, the only time that Buffalo did beat the NIU Huskies was back in 1968. Both teams weren't even FBS teams at that time. So this is, you know, historically a good matchup for the Huskies, but we'll see what happens today. And again, as I mentioned, social media, great ways for you guys to get engaged. You can buy cutouts, cutouts out in the east side of Husky Stadium. And $60, you'll put your face on there and you'll be in, in Husky Stadium. Pay attention to those on our social media accounts tonight. You might see your face, and it's a great way to support the Husky Athletic Fund and support NIU student athletes. And it'll go directly to the COVID-19 relief fund to keep NIU athletics at the cusp of the NCAA. Weather forecast, hey. Typically, DeKalb is a windy place, right? One of the windiest places in America. But tonight, not too bad. Not too bad. It is 62 degrees currently right now. And we expect by kickoff it'll be 60 degrees. So a beautiful night for Maction. Because, as you all know, Maction weather can get a little tricky. So, hey, let's get right into the interview with NIU assistant coach, defensive backs and special teams, Dan Jackson. Joining us now. We're having some technical difficulties getting that interview from Dan Jackson, NIU assistant coach, defensive backs and special teams for the Huskies. So we're staying with me for now. Let's lay the land. What's going on? It's the Buffalo Bulls and the NIU Huskies. Looks like we have that interview ready for you. Dan Jackson, assistant coach. We'll toss it to you, Joe. Joining us now is uh, cornerbacks coach and co-special teams uh, coach uh, Dan Jackson. Coach, uh, welcome uh, welcome to our pregame show. How you doing? Man, I'm fired up to be here. Couldn't wait. The, the day before the day before. So like a kid in a candy store right now. Um, you and I had kind of an interesting meeting. Um, we were at the local grocery store, and I see somebody walking around with a red hoodie. Tall guy, but he had his face pretty much covered like we all did um, that time. Um, we get in the line in, in Jewel, and I'm behind this guy, and I'm like, Coach Jackson? I was like, yeah. So um, it's kind of cool to see your face, uh, your full face now, because – well, yep. practice and everything else like that. We haven't even had a chance to see each other. Yeah, that, that, that made me laugh because uh, I was new. My wife wasn't even um, fully here yet and those sort of things. And I called her right away after I left. And I said, you know, and I, I know, uh, you know, fo football was big at SDSU, but I'm in line. And I, I said, I, Husky Nation, you know, and uh, everybody's got it figured out. So I haven't even met Joe yet. And he's recognizing me at the at the grocery store. So I said, yeah, I, I knew uh, 
you know, we were up a level and, and uh, that you were going to be one of the best in the business that you were, you were able to point that out just in the grocery line um, with the mask on nonetheless. So I, it was impressive. Yeah. I don't know what it was. I mean, I only met you through email and probably think a text message, but it's kind of an unorthodox <laughs> way to meet, but no, welcome to NIU. And uh, first off, I got to ask you, I mean, what, what brought you to our program? Um, you know, well, well, I had a relationship with coach Isis before at South Dakota state and, um, you know, so we've always kept in contact. We were good friends, uh, for a long time. And, um, you know, basically I remember, uh, you know, kind of hearing about an opportunity and then getting on the phone with coach hammock and, and discussing that opportunity here. Um, you know, and I'd been, a, I'd been in South Dakota state for a long time and I loved it there. And there's some special people there and it means a lot to me, uh, that place. But, but at the end of the day, after one phone conversation with coach hammock, I knew that NIU, um, you know, was the move. I, I'm, I'm big into growth. Um, and that's not moving around. That's growing as a person, becoming a better coach. Um, and in order to do that, I wanted to surround myself with great people. So um, was, was thankful enough to be able to interview, uh, meet the whole staff, go through the process there. And then uh, to me, you know, when Coach Hammock offered me the job, it was an opportunity to learn from him, uh, grow underneath him. Uh, just couldn't be more impressed with, with him as a coach and a leader. Uh, and then the football tradition here. I mean, it's something that, you know, as a football, you know, you're a football coach, but you're a football fan. And um, I mean, I've always admired this program. And I, I was admired, have admired how it was built, um, you know, through hard work, blue collar, uh, you know, mindset. And that's what I want, wanted to be a part of. So to me, uh, and then even I'd, I'd known some of the kids on the team already because I had recruited them, you know, prior because we kind of recruit the same areas. So, um, you know, a lot of things were really appealing to me and I, I couldn't be happier that, that, that uh, it all worked out. I mean, you come from a successful program, though, at SDSU. I mean, can you talk about what, what you want to bring from, from that um, success experience to, to here where we're trying to build it back up again? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we uh, you know, being a top five program consistently and chasing championships uh, at South Dakota State, I mean, it took time to get to that point. You needed to build a culture and a foundation um, that, that started with the administration and then the coaching staff and then the players and everybody being on the same page. So, um, to me – you know, I, I want to bring, you know, that 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 championship mindset. We've won a lot of football games here, um, you know, but we, we want to take it up a notch and we want to be a dominant, uh, you know, program in this league. And so I'm going to bring a championship mindset mindset to, to, to work every single day. Um, you know, I, I'm a detail oriented guy, uh, you know, from the schematics to be able to kind of bring some new ideas from a schematic standpoint um, and then even from a motivation standpoint. You know, I pride myself on having a ton of energy and being a, a positive leader while still holding people accountable. So I want to bring the things that Coach Stigelmeyer instilled in me and that I learned at South Dakota State here and then then mesh those things with what, what, what Coach Hammock's vision is. Um, you know, and it couldn't be a better fit so far. So, um, you know, I, I know that I'm going to bring a ton of energy to the program, a lot of uh, ideas from the special teams and defensive standpoint uh, schematically. And then I love recruiting. I absolutely love recruiting. Um, I, I feel that, you know, really over our time at South Dakota State, we flipped that program into a consistent winner because we started getting the best kids from our area. And we didn't have to go all over the country, though, you know, you do from time to time. And uh, we have that same mindset here. We want to dominate the, the Chicago area, the, the state of Illinois and all of our surrounding states. Um, and so I, I'm thankful to be able to, to bring uh, some knowledge in the recruiting and, and having had some success there uh, as well. How has these last few months been for you as a coach? I mean, on again, off again, um, Zoom calls. How, how did you have to adjust your own, yourself and your, your, your coaching style? The th ways we adjusted is, you know, I'm, like I said, relationships are why I do this. So, you know, we started doing, you know, FaceTime, FaceTiming the players individually every day to get to know who they are and what makes them tick. Uh, doing just daily staff Zoom meetings uh, to make sure that we were on the same page you know, as a staff and then having position meetings and special teams meetings over Zoom with the entire team, you know, so it's definitely an adjustment from a technology standpoint. Um, but I, I think it was awesome. We embraced it. Uh, you know, there wasn't one day that we hung our head or we pouted or we thought, what was me? We found solutions uh, with Coach Hammock's leadership. We found solutions um, and we attacked every single day. And we really got a ton better over the quarantine. We did. I mean, we have a young team. Uh, it gave us an opportunity to you know, when the NCAA rules allowed us to be able to get our freshmen incoming players on those Zoom calls, we were able to get them ahead, ahead of where they would have been had this not happened. So um, as much as I would have loved, uh, you know, to just kind of 
you know, have things stay status quo, I, I know that there was a huge opportunity for us to improve. And we did uh, the, getting the guys going on online workouts. Um, you know, I, I was sending them quizzes over an online service, sending them flashcards, um, you know, to, to be able to, to learn through the mail. Uh, just so many different different ways and avenues that it made us be creative as a coach. And then recruiting. I mean, how do you recruit and you can't go on the road and you can't get kids on your campus? Well, you know, you need to make videos. You need to make, snip, you know, little snippets of videos and GIFs and different graphics and um, collaborate, get their families on the phone more. So uh, I really think what all this has done, you know, uh, the programs that attack this and did it the right way are going to be so much better off because we're going to be able to, uh, to just be so much more diverse in our teaching and recruiting. Got a couple of weeks on the field now with the guys um, getting ready for, for tonight's game. Who, who has impressed you the most or, or what, what could you say mainly about just the entire group that you've been impressed by? Yeah, I tell you what, just, just initially as a team, I'm so impressed with how we attack every day. I mean, it, we, our culture uh, is strong. We've got the right guys here that are bought in uh, to attacking every day. Uh, it's been one of the more physical camps that I've been a part of, um, you, you know, from that standpoint. So I love and have been impressed by our physicality as a team. And then defensively, I mean, obviously our linebackers, we've got Kyle, we've got Lance, we've got some guys from a leadership standpoint there. The D-line has been extremely impressive to me. And then, and I, I say those guys because they directly affect how the secondary um, plays because those guys, those guys need to do their job in front of us. Uh, so the DBs are allowed to, to do their job. So uh, been really impressed uh, just with the mindset of Dylan Thomas. You know, I know he's got a, a, a desire to be great. Uh, so I've been able to push him uh, beyond where I think he thought he could, could, could get to. Um, and, the, and he still has a lot of uh, improving to do there. And then, you know, Jordan Gandy was a kid that was with me at South Dakota State. And then um, he had some family things going on. He, he's from DeKalb. Uh, he was able to come back here. He's able to be eligible uh, to play. And, and his, his mindset and how he attacks every day, um, it, it, it's like he's a pro. I mean, he attacks like an NFL player. And uh, he, he's seen a lot of success. And he's grown. Um, and he's going to play for us uh, a ton there at corner. Miles McGee is a freshman. Uh, has come in and been really impressive, uh, you know, just for a young guy that, that uh, played the position. But there's just so many more things you see at, at the college level from a pass game standpoint and a run fit standpoint for him. Uh, so really, really excited about where he's headed. You know, another freshman, Eric Rogers, doing everything right. He's had some, um, you know, a couple nicks and, and dings here and there to where he's had to miss some time, but really excited where where he's headed. Um, Jamain March has been an impressive kid to me too because he's attacked every day and been extremely physical and J.D. Harris has stepped up for us as well so it's a blending of young guys freshmen um, with guys that were here uh, you know but I promise you this the corners are going to give you everything they have they're going to play with great focus they're going to be physical um, you know and they're going to be dialed in on doing their their job every time uh, for this defense. Hey coach you talk about uh, what are some of the challenges that Buffalo uh, poses to our guys uh, tonight? Tell you what, they're a physical team. Uh, they're well coached. They're disciplined. Uh, they protect the football. You know, they, they're going to have a couple quarterbacks that have played uh, with some experience, so that's always a positive for them. Um, you know, in, in, in their offense, you know, they're an RPO offense. So they can be multiple, but they really want to run the ball. Uh, they got two really talented tailbacks, but people forget. You know, they they've got a, a very talented receiver on the outside, and then a couple guys that I know are new to the program that they're expecting a lot out of. So um, we're going to be physical against the run you know, uh, make sure we take care of the RPO game. And, you know, you know, anytime a team is, is this physical and wants to pound the rock, your DBs are going to be on an island quite a bit. And so, you know, we're going to need those guys to step up and make plays um, when they are challenged in, in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Hey, Coach. Uh, yep. Can't thank you enough for joining us. Um, best of luck uh, tonight and best of luck all season. Thanks, Joe Huskies. Can't wait. Let's get it done. Thanks, Joe. We're gonna, and also welcome to the Husky family, assistant coach Dan Jackson. We're gonna go straight into our interview with Husky cornerback Dylan Thomas. That's Eddie Garcia bringing you the latest segment from Huskies Unleashed with Dylan Thomas.
Unfortunately, we're having technical difficulties with the interview with Dylan Thomas. So instead, we're going to jump ahead here. We're going to get in our interview with NIU Husky alumnus DJ Brown, star from the 2018 MAC Championship game. Joe, let's hear it. Joining us now, the hero of the 2018 MAC Championship game, DJ Brown. DJ, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How you been? Oh, not too bad. How you been? Man, living life, having fun, working. <laughs> Where are you at now? <laughs> um, in Chicago. I came up here in November, so I've been here for about a year. Um, working at Impact Networking in Bolingbrook. Uh, me and Marcus, uh, Kevin Tannenbaum. So a lot of Huskies over there. Cool. Is it? Uh, did you go home at all from um, the time you graduated till the time you came back? Yeah. So I went to Houston right after the bowl game. Uh, I was there for about five, six months. Um, I ended up getting a call from a friend about a job opening up here. So I uh, made the trip back down here. Um, so, yeah. Couldn't just stay away, huh? No, I thought I could, but I could <laughs> What well, wasn't the proud of young man from Arkansas to uh, Northern Illinois when you were first recruited as a freshman? Uh, I wanted to be away from home, but I didn't want to be too far to where my parents couldn't come to the game. So uh, Chicago is like 10 hours. So it's far enough they couldn't pop up on me. <laughs> but uh, it was close enough to where if they wanted to come down, they could make the drive or the flight. Perfect. Um, well, as you know, today we're playing Buffalo. Um, Last time we played him was in the 2018 MAC Championship game. And uh, you had a pretty big role in that game. Uh, we, we're going to talk a little bit about that and um, just, you know, kind of what it was like to, um, you know, what, what was it like to join a, um, a football program? It wasn't just the goal wasn't winning the MAC Championship every year. It was, ex it was expected. Uh, it was fun. I mean, I feel like when you look to play college football, you want to go to a program where they're going to win. I mean, who likes losing? So to come to NIU, I mean, being from the South, we've heard of NIU before, obviously the Jordan Lynch air. Um, so I was pretty familiar with it. Uh, so to join a program where it's expected, uh, it's pretty big because now you got the pressure of you got to be your best at all times. Um, so it was pretty, it was pretty cool for me. Um, that game was pretty wild. We were down, uh, we were down pretty big in the <laughs> going in that second half. Um, can you just talk a bit about like what that first half was like? And it, I mean, we were moving the ball, but we weren't able to, I mean, can you just talk about like, you know, just, just start out, just, you know, what was that first half like? It was weird. I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, we played in the, the match championship my freshman year. Yeah. But I wasn't playing as much. Um, so I, I didn't have any expectations this year. It was more so they came in with the big name. They had um, the quarterback and the receiver. So coming in the first half, it was more so like, okay, um, let's go prove ourselves. I mean, we know who we are. We were coming off a two-game losing streak. Um, let's go show them what we're about. Um, so the first half was scary. I mean, when we walked in the locker room, nobody was thinking like, damn, we're not going to be able to come back. But nobody at the same time was thinking like, how did we get to here? I mean, how did we get down 29-10? We know we can move the ball. Um, we have been good all year. So we just had to really tighten up, talk to each other, um, and then go back out there and really, really show who we was. I was going to say, I mean – what, what was the sec? What was the key to the second half? You thought? I mean, it, it was just seemed like Marcus kind of just was on fire too for a little while. Oh, yeah. Marcus Childers. I think we came on man. <laughs> it's one thing to lose; it's another thing to get whooped on national television, especially in a championship game. So I know, as far as the receivers and the, the quarterbacks, our biggest thing. I talked to RG. I mean, our biggest thing was man, just go out there taking one play at a time. Me, Spence, and Wes, um, Dennis, Cole, Mitch. I mean, we was just all talking like, dude, come on now. Um, we're going to get one-on-one -on -one matchups. You got to win one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one matchups. Um, told Coach you we got to throw the ball. And he said, well, yeah, you're down 29-10, so we're going to have to throw the ball. Um, and we just had to win our one-on-one -on -one matchups. And I think that's what the key difference was, knowing that we could beat them one-on-one um, -on -one and really showing it out there. The uh, touchdown pass. Um, that was a battle, man. I mean, you, you go up, you catch it, you're coming down. You could have come down in the field of play and not score that touchdown, but – Kind of roll I mean, you just talk about that one that, that game one touchdown uh, reception. Man, uh, no lie, I blacked out. Um, I ran, I so I always talk about this. Don't be. Um, when he checked the play, we said, well, What was it going to be? Um, he called Will, so I know I got a double move. Um, and then Wes is going to come back from a corner out. Um, 
when I ran a double move, Marcus threw the ball, but you know them bright lights. So the lights was <laughs> legit like this. Uh, I blacked out for a good five to six seconds. Um, and I just thought I just got to put myself in a position to try to catch the ball. And when I felt it hit me, I just closed my arms. Um, and then everything after that, like I said, I blacked out. And then my celebration was legit. I didn't remember what I did until I saw it. Um, it was it was a crazy experience. How often do you go back and watch that game? Uh, I would say at least twice a year. <laughs> at least twice a year. It was crazy. I mean, it's yeah. – I mean, it was one of the – I was there in 11. We had the 20-point the comeback mm -hmm. in the second against Ohio. But there was just something – there's something about that game that just seemed a little bit more uh, special. I, I don't know if that's that's the right way yeah. to catch you guys it felt was, about it. I think it was more so just because of all the hype they had. You know, they had two league players um, that they considered was going to the NFL, like drafted. Um, so, one, we knew um, we had the same goal. So, we knew um, the game was going to be packed. It was going to be a lot of scouts there. It was going to – like, it was a highlight game. And it was one of those games where – um, you really come to college football for that's the games that you got to show out in and that's the games that you look forward to. So one thing you remember particularly about that game, whether it the walkthrough, the warmups, I mean, is there one thing that really stands out to you about that? Uh, I would say three things before the game, walking into that stadium. Uh, I mean, that whole week, dude, it was, it was, it was crazy. But before the game, walking into that stadium, um, coming back out at halftime, and then hearing that half of the parents cried when we won. I mean, I thought that was pretty crazy. Uh, Nate's dad cried. I know my dad shed a tear. Um, I know Marcus's mom was going crazy. Um, so it was, it was, it was a whole crazy experience. Um, and then, kind of when you look back on your time at NIU, what, what, what do you think of most? What, what did you learn most about yourself? I mean, you really grow up. I'm. Uh, you come to college as a young kid. Uh, you're doing whatever you want to do because I mean, you're away from home for the first time, legit away from home. Um, and you really grow with the the guys that you're there with. Um, you see people come and go, um, but those people that stayed. Um, I know we had a, a sign in the locker room and said those who stayed will be champions. So when we won that game, I know um, me and Wes um, and Spence when we walked back in there, it was kind of like surreal to see that sign. Um, Cause it was like, damn, we really did it. Um, but the biggest thing I would say I learned is just how to how to be a man. You know, you're on your own. So when things come and go, um, such as life outside of football, you got to learn to deal with it because you're by yourself. Um, and I think having that locker room around you or that locker room experience is the biggest thing that helps out a young man when he's um, in college and playing football. You're part of an incredible run of NIU football teams to not only make the man championship game, but to win it. What does it mean to you to to, to be a MAC champion and in that in that be one of the MAC championship teams in that run? It means everything uh, to come to NIU to come to a program that's known for winning the MAC championship um, and to be one of the teams that build the MAC championship back up there, uh, and then to give the freshmen what I didn't have. Um, I remember I kept saying that, like, on the sideline when we was getting a, a rhythm going in the second half, I was like, bro, we're going to get y'all a championship. Because I remember being a freshman on the sideline. Like, I want a championship. I want to win the MAC championship and not playing a lot. So um, to give that to the freshmen um, was it was crazy. It, it felt so good. Hey, Dean Snow, we really want to thank you so much for uh, sharing all those memories and your time here at NIU. I mean, I miss you. I love seeing you on the sidelines. I know we're going to be able to see you this, uh, this year, but – um, I just want to wish you all the best and thank you so much for coming back, coming and joining us. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Husky Nation, we wish you could join us here at Husky Stadium this year. Unfortunately, that can't be the case. But as we get closer to kickoff, let's get you the sights and sounds from around Husky Stadium.
It's Maction. That's right. We're going to mix it up. We will bring you that Huskies Unleashed interview with Eddie Garcia and NIU cornerback Dylan Thomas. Eddie? I'm here with redshirt junior cornerback Dylan Thomas. Dylan, thank you for joining us today on our first ever pregame show. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I'm geeked up. I'm really excited. So what an adventure these last few months have been, haven't they? I mean, not the typical season by any means, but as Huskies, we have to adapt. So what has it been like from your standpoint trying to ad adjust to this unorthodox season? Um, you know, I just feel like well, um, coming into the season, it's, it's a lot more individual responsibility. Um, online classes are a major thing now. So it's just kind of time managing, managing, you know, your workout schedule, your um, class schedule, and just football all in all. So I feel like that's the biggest, that's the biggest difference that's new to us, just um, being our own, own time management for sure. And this will be your third season on the field. I mean, you're, you're a vet now in the locker room. So how has it been serving in the leadership position and trying to get you, you and your fellow teammates ready to go for this upcoming season? Oh, no, yeah, it's way different. Um, just kind of coming up, um, being under like Kelsey Williams and Trayshawn Foster and um, all those guys have really helped just develop me and just to kind of be under their wing for a little bit and see how they do things and that leadership style that they had. They were, McKelty was a little bit more of a grit guy than I am. And so I'm just trying to find my own uh, leadership style and just go from there. But it's uh, it's exciting. We got a bunch of young young corners in the room and it's, an, it's, it's like interesting to see them get better day by day as they go on. I love it. Definitely, definitely. And I feel like people often overlook the mental aspect of the game. So like with football camp coming in September, October for the first time, I think in your life, probably, what was that experience like overall? Um, it was just, just a, a quick, quick uh, ramp up, you know, just going from, you know, during the months of like August and September, we weren't too sure if we were going to have a season at all. And then we just see, um, get the notifications, get the tweets, get the messages going on. And we see that we're back in action and, um, just getting back into that mindset. I feel like, like, you can't get you can't get too comfortable, especially in a year like this. And uh, getting back into that mindset is a big thing for us. And I feel like Coach Hammock, um, our strength coach, Coach Juni, and then all, all the other staff have done a real good job of just making sure that we stay locked in, we stayed um, watching the film, we stay doing all the things we need to do just to be ready for when that time is called for our first game. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the NIU staff. I mean, NIU has done an incredible job of taking care of the athletes on and off the field with precautionary measures put in place, but. I'm, I'm assuming this is another first time for you, but how will you and your teammate adjust to there being ultimately no fans at Husky Stadium um, besides you and your opponent, essentially? Oh, man, yeah, that's going to be um, that's going to be a new experience. Um, it's sad that we, we can't have, you know, the usual tailgate before the game and the fans coming in, the students in the student section. But um, we've just been locking in, you know, um, we've seen how it is. Like, luckily enough, there's been other teams who have played, obviously, ahead of the season. And just seeing kind of how that feel is, watching them do it, I'm pretty confident that we're going to be ready to go, uh, regardless, fans or no fans, family or no family. It's sad, but it, it is what it is, ready to play. Sometimes when you face adversity together as a unit, especially in something as big as this, it creates more of a family-like bond, right? Um, tell us a little bit about how this team has bonded this offseason. Oh, man. Um, Coach Hammond Coach and the staff, like, once again, have done, like, um, Leading up until the season, I've done a real good job. They, they were doing fantasy fantasy leagues with the team. Um, each, each position group has our own fantasy football team. And we're just kind of, um, before the season, before we knew we actually had, we were kind of balling out with that. Um, doing dodgeball, we had, we played softball on the, on, the, on the field itself, and that was fun. That was really fun. Just, just doing different things like that, bingo night, just trying to build that, build that unity, build the, the familiarity with uh, the team, I guess. That's a real. That's that's been real interesting. And then just, co coach has done a good job. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen, but on social media, the, the the player, the juice player of the day, and all that, and that that makes sure that everyone's just coming together before each practice. We're smashing a brick, doing doing what it takes just to, you know, build, make it exciting, make it fun day by day, just building it up to that, building up to game day, really. And I noticed that specifically on social media, you mentioned that. I don't think there's a, anyone on campus with a more positive outlook on life than Coach Hammock. I mean, I, I think you would agree. How has Coach Hammock better prepared you for this season, despite given the circumstances? Oh, um, I would say just just like the developmental side. Um, obviously, bringing in 60 freshmen, it kind of allows the older guys like myself and Kyle Pugh and, 
um, the older kids on the team or so just to um, go through the, the, the basics, like step by step, um, the simple things, just re like refining those, making those perfect, making those crisp, and then and then just getting the younger guys as well to go and be ready for come game, come game day, come camp, come whatever uh, challenges uh, hit us, really. So recently, you and other few veteran players uh, were selected to discuss the upcoming season. All of the players except for you were actually redshirt seniors. What does it mean for you to be a part of that group? And did you ever see yourself getting to this point now leading the team, essentially? Oh, for sure. I mean, like, I, I feel like coming to college, everyone everyone has a plan and goal in mind. And mine, um, my route's been a, little, been a little bit different. You know, the first few years, I was just a more special teams guy, and I was thrown into the fire last year. Um, more so in, in just a whole position change. But um, going into that, I just feel like it's really an honor, you know, that Coach Hammock and um, the whole staff just views me as one of the guys who can step up and lead not only on the field but off the field in terms of interviews, media, and things like that as well. Um, it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a burden on the shoulders, but it's a burden you got to be willing to carry if, if, you, if you want that spotlight, you know. Most definitely, most definitely. Spoken like a true leader right there. Um, so last question for you here, Dylan. Through all the ups and downs from the starting spring ball, you know, to starting fall camp, to now having delayed season, through all the ups and downs, take us through how you handled that adversity a little bit. Um, just positivity. Um, positivity is the, the main thing, you know. Um, Ross, Ross Bowers uh, actually a couple of days ago talked to the, uh, the whole team about uh, positive self-talk. And I think that's that's a that's a key just to going to things like that with just a year of so much uncertainty. Um, you usually gotta stay positive, stay locked into what your personal goal is, and then enhance that with the team goal, and then just go from there. I feel like if, if you do those two things, then you, you're just setting yourself up for success. You know, regardless of if the season would have been in the spring or as it is now. Most definitely, most definitely. Well, that's all the questions I have for you, brother. I hope. You stay safe, stay healthy, and I wish you the best of luck this upcoming season. Appreciate it. Thanks, Eddie. One of the best parts of game day that we're all going to miss this year is the band. But good news, we're going to beat to the same drum and bring you that pregame show of the Husky Marching Band pre-recorded right now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Husky Stadium for an exciting evening of collegiate marching band performance. We are pleased to present the pride of the Midwest, the Northern Illinois University Husky Marching Band, under the direction of Dr. Thomas Boo, aided by graduate assistants Benjamin Randecker and Andy Chuck, the Silver Arch coach Lisa Morielli, color guard instructor Lori Valenzuela, drumline instructor Brett Coon, and visual instructor Bennett Constance. The Husky Marching Band is under the field leadership of drum majors David Weaver and Aaron Kirby. And I'm your announcer, Rick Valenzuela. Presenting the NIU Fanfare! 
invite you to all stand for the playing of the NIU alma mater. that doesn't get you ready for college football, I'm not sure what will. For more on the game, the X's and O's, let's toss it over to NIU radio play-by-play -play broadcaster Bill Baker and color analyst Mark Lindo. Look at this weather, everybody. 67 degrees, the first week of November. Welcome to Maction. We've got six scheduled games now as we begin things tonight, Mid-American Conference play. Teams are going to play everybody in their own division. They'll have one crossover game. That means the Northern Illinois Huskies are going to have to deal with the team that was picked to win the Eastern Division insofar as the media was concerned. Big number two in the East insofar as the coaches are concerned. We're talking about the Bulls of Buffalo. This is Mark Lindo to my left. Obviously, from what we have seen, the Bulls have everything they need to move the football. Well, they have an offense that is just loaded at every position. They have many returning starters on both sides of the football. I know we're talking offense, and this is a team that can really run the football. Look for them to do that 40, 45, 50 times tonight. Yeah, they love to run the football. Begins with a running back, Jared Patterson, better than 1,000 yards a year ago. Maybe the best tandem in the back. I don't know, between Patterson, where's number 26? The other guy to keep an eye on is number five in Kevin Marks. Well, first, Patterson, not enough superlatives you can find to talk about him. He's a Doak Walker candidate, an All-American candidate. He's powerful, he's explosive, and he smells the end zone. 33 career rushing touchdowns only after two years. And then Kevin Marks, he'd be a feature back on most teams. Mm -hmm. They'll find a way to get both of those people in the football game at the same time, 6'2", 205, downhill runner. These two backs really complement each other. Yeah. Take a look at the quarterbacking situation. Kyle Van Dries was the starter last year until he got injured. In comes Matt Myers. They both have experience. There's been quite a battle between these two insofar as the number one spot this season is concerned. And they've they played a little game. They haven't told us who the starter is going to be. It's either Van Dries or uh, Myers, and we'll just have to wait and see. Well, and I know Derek Jackson talking to him. He expects to see both of those quarterbacks tonight. Van Trees had almost 1,200 yards passing in eight games. He was 6-2 and two as a starter, and then Myers was a starter early on. He had a 245-yard game against Penn State, so that's how dynamic he can be. 
when they throw the football. I mean, one name stands, stands out, that's Antonio Nunn. He does have some some support at that position well, but none, none as a weapon. Yeah, he does have some support. They have a bevy of wide receivers that can burn, but Antonio Nunn, the best of all of them, 14 yards, a catch last year, six TDs. He's their long ball guy. He's their home run guy. NIU's young safeties are going to be able to ha have to help over the top at the back end of NIU's defense. All right, Mark Lindo on the defense. They uh, they expect seven starters to come back. They expect to be dominant. Just look at the uh, defensive ends in at number 50, Malcolm Koontz, number 49, Taylor Wiggins. Those two numbers, one and two, in the Mid-American Conference in terms of individual sacks last season. Yeah, you know, they combined for 17 and a half sacks, and Koontz goes 6'3", Riggins goes 6'2". So they're long, they're athletic, and they're disruptive. NIU is going to have to chip and get some double teams on both those guys here tonight. So here come the keys, everybody. And uh, as always, run the football. That's basic in any football game you're going to play, but doubly important here because you want to keep it away from that Buffalo offense. Well, NIU's running backs, if they get some seams, they have some explosive guys in their own right. But, yes, you have to keep that Buffalo offense off the field. I mentioned earlier they want to run it 45 or 50 times. To keep them off the field, they can't do that. Communication on defense, another big key. You look at the two deeps, they've got uh, 12 individuals who are either freshmen or redshirt freshmen in their two deeps. Five freshmen are starting. Everybody needs to be on the same page. They need to know what the other guy's doing out there. Well, absolutely. That's where all those repetitions and practice over and over and over again, that's what comes into play tonight. How prepared will this team be? There's always some game slippage, especially with young guys, and we'll see how the learning curve promotes itself tonight. No question. And the last one, the intangible. Despite everything that's going on, what, the past eight or nine months, is there a season? Is there not going to be a season? How many games? What's going to happen? What are the protocols? The bottom line is the game itself has not changed. And the team that adapts to that fact and is, is able to recognize and deal with the uh, distraction, that's going to be the team, I think, that, that comes out ahead tonight. Looking forward, my buddy, six games this year. Let's get after it. It'll be some fun. Looking forward to tonight. That's Mark Lindo. I'm Bill Baker. We wish all of you were here with us. But enjoy the game. Thanks. Thank you, Bill and Mark, for setting the stage for tonight's opening night of Maction Football right here in DeKalb, Illinois. There's plenty of ways to follow along in tonight's game. Listen to Bill and Mark on our TuneIn app. Also, AM 1330, AM 560, and WLBK right here in DeKalb. Also, different ways you can follow along the game on a second screen. NIU Huskies app, NIU Huskies on Twitter and Facebook. We'll be doing all sorts of fan engagement throughout the night to keep you involved and right here in the action. Also, make sure you are watching on ESPN2. That's right. Turn your dial right now. ESPN2, NIU Huskies football. It's time. Can you believe it? Football in the MAC, NIU Huskies. Let's get this thing started. Let's do it. Follow along. NIU Huskies app, NIU Huskies on Twitter and Facebook. Let's have some fun, and let's go Huskies. Here for NIU. And Richie is going to get the end zone. 